Good morning everyone. I just woke up and nothing gets me more fired up for the day than a little bit of math. So I decided to make you guys this video on solving for a specified variable. Look at this first problem here. We have QT, sorry, QR equals T and they want us to solve for R. And now you might be thinking, what Mr. Zonker, there's no numbers. How am I supposed to solve a problem with no numbers? Well, all you really need to do is think about it just like a problem with numbers. For example, let's look at this one on the right. Here we have 3x equals 15. Well, 3 times x, the opposite of that, is going to be to divide by 3, divide both sides by 3, and we're going to have our answer x equals 5. Now the problem back over here on the left with no numbers, we're solving for r. Think of this qr just like this 3x. This q, even though it's a letter, is just another number multiplying to r. So since we have q times r, we want to get rid of that q to get r by itself. So we just divide by q, divide by q to this side, just like we divided by 3 on this side. So we divide by q, those are going to cancel each other out, and we're going to be left with r equals now, since we can't divide this t and q like we did this 15 and 3, all you need to do is leave it. So this will be t over t divided by q. Now notice we have our r all by itself, and this is going to be our answer. So it's the same process as you would solve if there weren't any numbers. I mean, if there were numbers, uh, just try to imagine the each, these extra variables as number and do the same thing you would do to solve. All right, here we have 2m minus 3n equals 12r, and they want us to solve for m. So we're gonna try to get m by itself. Now this one looks very similar to 2m minus 3 equals 12. Remember, these extra variables, just think of them like regular numbers. So let's solve this one on the right as we solve the one on the left. First here, I have 2m minus 3 equals 12. Well, to get this grouped variable together, first I want to add 3 to both sides, so I'll add 3 to the left, add 3 to the right of the equal sign, that's going to cancel, leaving me with 2m equals 15. Just like uh, we did here with adding this 3, we have this 2m grouped, so we want to add 3n to the other side. So I'm going to start by adding 3n to the left, and adding 3n to the right. That's going to cancel. That's going to leave me with 2m equals. Now, because these are not like terms, we've got a 3n here and a 12r here. We can't add the r and the n, so all we do is we put them right next to each other. So here we'll have 12r plus 3n. Again, because they aren't like terms, we just put them, add it right onto the end here. Okay, back here. On the right, we have 2m equals 15, same exact idea. Here we want to divide both sides by 2, divide this side by 2. Those are going to cancel each other out, and we'll be left with m equals, 2 doesn't go in evenly, so we'll just write it as a fraction, 15 over 2, and we have our answer. Back over here, we still have this 2 times m, so we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to divide the left by 2, divide the right by 2. Now, these are going to cancel. We're going to be left with m equals. Uh, because we have these variables, r and n, it doesn't change anything. We're still going to put it over a fraction of 2. So here on top, we have 12r plus 3n. And all we did was divide this whole side by 2. And there's our answer. m equals 12r plus 3n, all divided by 2. Alright, for our next one, we have 4t minus q equals 7t, and they want us to solve for t. Here we have uh, the different, uh, what's different about this one here is we have the same variable t on both sides. So let's look at a, in a similar example with a variable on both sides. Here we have 4y minus 5 equals 7y. Well, your first step in solving this one with just the one variable would be to get your variable to one side. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract this 4y. 
subtract it on the right side as well, that's going to cancel, leaving with me with negative 5 equals 7y minus 4y is 3y. And I could do the same exact thing here uh, with our, our equation with more than one variable. Here I have 4t minus q equals 7t. First, let's get our t's to one side. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to subtract 4t from the left and subtract 4t from the right. That's going to leave me with a negative q equals 7t minus 4t is 3 T. Okay, let's hop back over to here. Now we've just got a simple one-step equation. We have 3 times y on the right. So all we want to do is divide by 3, divide the left side by 3, and that's going to leave us with y equals negative 5 thirds as our answer. Back on over to the left. Here we also just have a one-step equation, negative q equals 3t. We want to solve for t, so we have 3 times t. We'll use the inverse of multiplication, which is division, and we'll divide by 3 on the right. Divide by 3 on the left. That's going to leave us with t equals, and because we have a variable, doesn't matter. We still leave that on top and divide by 3, and that's going to leave us with negative q divided by 3. And there we go. Okay, here we have r times parentheses a plus b equals c, and they want us to solve for r. Now just because uh, we have parentheses does not necessarily mean we have to distribute. Here we have the r on the outside times a plus b. Now we want to solve for r, so this a plus b, what we can do is we can just divide by a plus b, divide the right side by a plus b. These will cancel, and that's just going to leave us with r equals c, the c that we had left, all divided by a plus b. And you've got your answer. Okay, let's look at this one. One third a times b times c equals 5x. We want to solve for b. So here's my b variable. I notice outside of that I have one third a and c. Well, I know I can get rid of this one-third if I multiply by three to both sides. That's going to give me uh, a, b, c left over here because that cancels it out. Equals 5x times 3 is 15x. Uh, next, I still have this a and this c multiplying by b. So what I can do is I can divide by a and c both sides. Since I want that A and that C to cancel, that will just leave me with B over here equals, and then I have 15X all over A times C. So while these types of solving for a specified variable can seem a little bit more tricky, it's really the same thing as solving any other equation. As long as you stick to your inverses, use your properties of equality, use the same rules that you've learned for regular equations, get that variable by itself, you're going to be golden. All right, everybody, have a great day, and we will continue our adventures of mathematics very soon.